Now, Tom, you've been focused on the downside momentum in inflation for a while. Um, it, it's gotten a little sticky in terms of the official readings recently. Um, Scott talking about the risk that it perks up again. How do you think that plays out from here? Uh, I think the Fed's comfortable that inflation isn't going to necessarily have a a large wave that takes us back to emergency levels of hiking. Um, But, you know, these reports are, you know, I can kind of quibble with them because, you know, this this most recent PC report, almost a quarter of the inflation was magazines for the month. And so, you know, is that repeatable or because it was in in the last 70 years, the highest monthly increase in magazine prices? Right. I mean, you can usually pick an outlier on a one month basis, but sure. That's right. So. The rally reflects that after the uncertainty of the election, investors are now more confident and ready to re-enter the market, especially in sectors that benefit from strong economic growth. I I mean, I think the other piece of it that I think is maybe uh, more long-lasting has been the fact that um, portfolio management fees, right? So basically, the stock market goes up, you kind of impute that there's this rise in in portfolio management fees, which really nobody pays out of pocket. It's it's, it's one of these funny things where it's uh, it's sort of like, how much do you want to fixate on? Yeah, and the fees come out of your your gains. Exactly. It's not coming out of somebody's wallet. So that's a great point. And I think ultimately, consumer expectations of inflation have been really stable, and I think that's what matters more to the Fed. And I, I think if the Fed even just cuts one time next year, it's still a dovish Fed, and it's, it's actually bullish because it... While the overall market is experiencing a strong rally, Lee also hints at some underlying issues. There are sectors or areas of the market that are seeing sell-offs or aren't performing as well. This could mean that while some investors are enthusiastic about economic growth, others are more cautious, or perhaps there are concerns in specific areas. Gives us a lot more fuel. Yeah, I mean, historically, you don't want the Fed in, uh, you know, in emergency mode. And, uh, and I keep pointing out, in 95 into 96, I think you only got a couple, three cuts. Uh, and they went on hold for a while, worked out OK. Stephanie, I wonder about your perch there and your window on what, uh, what individual investors are doing and how they're prioritizing uh, the movement of their money. And I, I say that as a moment when it does seem as if there's been this rekindling of energy within certain parts of the market. Some of these uh, kind of retail trader favorites are flying again. And this idea that obviously if we are in um, a, you know, kind of higher animal spirits type environment, that that might run for a while. Tom Lee's point about animal spirits suggests that there is a psychological boost in the market right now. Investors are feeling more optimistic and are willing to take on more risk. I share stock markets latest news, datas and important information on my Telegram channel. If you want to stay updated with these things before everyone else. Open the description of this video, click on my Telegram channel's link, and simply join my Telegram channel. Gotcha. I know you've obviously been bullish Bitcoin. Um, It's it's obviously been on this incredible run. I just wonder about the round numbers that are piling up. We have 100,000 in Bitcoin, 6,000 on the S&P, 45,000 on the Dow. It just feels as if we have the potential for people feeling as if, wow, we made it. Yeah. Is that a problem? Yeah, well, maybe we're in a simulation, right? Yeah, yeah. there you go. Um, you know, I, I think that the, the fundamental arguments for Bitcoin are even stronger now than they were at the start of the year because I think we've gone from huge regulatory headwinds and governments hostile to potentially the U.S. making this a strategic sovereign asset at a time when, uh, you know, again, it's proven itself as a pretty good store of value. I mean, whether you look at three year, five year, 10 year, and as you know, Bitcoin's total value is two trillion. Gold's network value is 19 trillion. Yeah. So Bitcoin has a lot of room to rise. All right. I'm just going to use that as a chance to point out that every time we talk about Bitcoin fundamentals, we're actually just talking about supply and demand. To me, it's to me it's technical. It's more people right. have more ways That's to buy right. more of it. I use a stock market strategy in which I pick 10 stocks every month using artificial intelligence and get massive returns. Using this strategy I have turned $4,000 into $143,000 in the last one year. The 10 stocks I bought last month has given me 177% return and I have again bought these 10 stocks. If you want to learn the strategy which I have revealed in my 3 hour course and get access to see which 10 stocks I'm buying every month and which trades I'm taking, plus all these benefits. Click the link in description and join my Patreon. Join fast because this is a limited time offer. Uh, 
Yes, uh, but you know, then again, that's how you talk about dollars or gold. Sure. Right, there is is because a dollar is exchangeable for a dollar. No, of course, but yeah. it moves on economic dynamics and things like that. All right, we have, we're going to definitely have this discussion again. Tom, Stephanie, Scott, really appreciate it. Everybody have a great weekend. Thanks for joining me here on Thanks, this Black Friday. I think uh, I'm kind of thinking the next three to six months we could get to about 6,300 on the S&P, but I, I actually think uh, you can see better returns elsewhere. I do think with a higher interest rate environment, even if it, it comes down a little bit from here, stays in this range. Market's reaction to the election outcome. Tom Lee believes that the market did not fully price in the outcome of the election, which is why we're seeing such a strong rally today, a 1500 point gain on the Dow. If the market had already priced in the election result, we likely would have seen much less volatility, possibly flat trading, but instead, we're witnessing a surge. According to Lee, many investors took a cautious, de-risk position ahead of the election. This means they were concerned about potential social unrest, instability, or other negative consequences that could have followed a contentious election. Now that the election outcome is clearer or settled, money is being put back into the market, and this reinvestment is being driven by a sense of confidence, often referred to as animal spirits. These animal spirits, the, are an economic term that refers to the emotional and psychological factors that drive market behavior, often in an exuberant or optimistic direction. Sectors benefiting from the rally. Lee notes that investors are putting money back into sectors that are seen as cyclical or economically sensitive. These are sectors that tend to do well when the economy is growing or when there is confidence in economic recovery. Specific sectors that are benefiting include Steelmakers, these companies are often seen as bellwethers for economic growth since steel is a fundamental material in infrastructure and manufacturing. Banks' banks are often positively correlated with economic growth because they make more money when the economy is doing well through lending, for example. Other cyclical sectors these could include industries like construction, industrials or energy, all of which tend to perform better when the economy is strong and there's optimism about future growth. Investor behaviour post-election. The rally reflects that after the uncertainty of the election, Investors are now more confident and ready to re-enter the market, especially in sectors that benefit from strong economic growth. Tom Lee's point about animal spirits suggests that there is a psychological boost in the market right now investors are feeling more optimistic and are willing to take on more risk. Contrast with underlying weakness in some parts of the market. While the overall market is experiencing a strong rally, Lee also hints at some underlying issues. There are sectors or areas of the market that are seeing sell-offs or aren't performing as well. This could mean that while some investors are enthusiastic about economic growth, others are more cautious or perhaps there are concerns in specific areas, even if the overall market looks strong. Mike Sam I share stock markets latest news, datas and important information on my Telegram channel. If you want to stay updated with these things before everyone else, open the description of this video. Click on my Telegram channel's link and simply join my Telegram channel. I use a stock market strategy in which I pick 10 stocks every month using artificial intelligence and get massive returns. Using this strategy I have turned $4,000 into $143,000 in the last one year. The 10 stocks I bought last month has given me 177% return and I have again bought these 10 stocks. If you want to learn the strategy which I have revealed in my 3 hour course and get access to see which 10 stocks I'm buying every month and which trades I'm taking plus all these benefits. Click the link in description and join my Patreon. Join fast because this is a limited time offer. And Tolly, another CNBC commentator, adds that we've seen a broader strength in certain types of stock cyclical, economically sensitive names, but there are also areas of the market where there are some pullbacks or weakness. This indicates that not all sectors are moving in the same direction and some parts of the market could be struggling even amid the rally. Now that the election is out of the way, Investors are shifting their focus back to growth opportunities. There's a real sense of optimism in the market right now, and you can see that reflected in the sectors that are leading this rally. We're seeing sectors that are more economically sensitive and cyclical like steelmakers, banks, and other industrials experiencing a strong move to the upside, as investors seem to be betting that stronger economic growth and deregulation are in the cards. It's almost like a collective sigh of relief, as a lot of the fears about uncertainty and volatility have started to dissipate. But it's not just about the US. Stock market. We're also seeing strength in the US. Dollar, 
which has been gaining against a basket of other major currencies. That's typically an indicator that investors are feeling more confident about the US economy in the wake of an election, especially when it comes to policies that are perceived to be more pro-growth. In fact, if you look at the performance of the dollar today, it's clear that global investors are positioning themselves in favour of the US economy in the short to medium term. Tom Lee, a well-known market strategist, has been a vocal advocate for the ongoing strength of the technology sector, especially the so-called Magnificent Seven or Mag7 stocks, which have been pivotal in driving the market's performance this year. These large cap tech companies like Apple, Microsoft and others have dominated the headlines and much of the investor focus, largely because they've benefited from rapid innovation, the growth of artificial intelligence, and their leadership in sectors like cloud computing and digital transformation. However, as we now move past the election and look ahead toward the rest of the year, Tom Lee believes that the broader market narrative is due for a shift. He argues that investors, who have been heavily invested in tech for much of this year, may begin to look elsewhere in the market, especially into sectors that have been left behind during the tech rally, but which could benefit from a return of what he calls animal spirits. Animal spirits and market breadth. The term animal spirits was famously used by economist John Maynard Keynes to describe the emotional and psychological factors that drive economic decision-making, such as confidence, optimism and enthusiasm. Tom Lee believes that in the aftermath of the election, there could be a resurgence of these animal spirits, especially in sectors that have been out of favour in the current market cycle. This renewed optimism could spread across different areas of the economy, leading to greater market breadth, which would be a positive for broader equity market performance. Why the shift might happen now? Lee's thesis is predicated on the idea that with the election behind us, many of the political uncertainties that had dominated headlines for months will fade into the background. This opens the door for a more sustainable, growth-driven rally that encompasses a wider range of sectors, not just technology. Investors, who have largely positioned themselves in mega-cap tech stocks, may begin to look for opportunities in other parts of the market that offer more attractive valuations or those poised to benefit from changes in the economic or policy landscape. As the market moves beyond the heightened political risk and noise associated with the election cycle, Tom sees a shift in investor behaviour. Investors might begin to gravitate towards companies that could be set to benefit from macroeconomic trends like mergers and acquisitions, corporate restructuring and the potential for private equity expansion. This could signal a broader rally that involves smaller, less crowded parts of the market. Small cap stocks the next big opportunity? One area that Tom Lee sees as particularly ripe for growth is small cap stocks. Historically, small cap stocks tend to perform well during periods of economic recovery when confidence is high and the broader market has turned the corner. In particular, Tom believes that small cap stocks are still undervalued relative to their large cap counterparts. While tech stocks may be trading at lofty multiples, small cap stocks, especially those in cyclical sectors or those that stand to benefit from market consolidation, may offer significant upside potential. The valuation gap between large cap tech stocks and small cap stocks has been widening in recent years, and Tom believes this presents an opportunity for investors willing to diversify beyond the dominant tech names. Small cap stocks, which often have a more nimble business model and are better able to adapt to changing market conditions, could see more robust growth in the coming months, particularly if the broader market enters a period of economic expansion. Financials and basic materials key sectors to watch. Another area where Tom sees potential is in financial stocks. As interest rates continue to adjust in response to broader economic conditions, financial institutions could benefit from a steeper yield curve and stronger demand for financial products. Banks, insurance companies, and other financial institutions tend to do well in environments where the economy is growing, inflation expectations are stable, and interest rates rise. Tom sees this as an opportunity for investors to look beyond the tech-heavy parts of the market and consider the more traditional, economically sensitive sectors. Likewise, basic materials industries like industrial metals, chemicals and energy are likely to benefit from a continuation of the global economic recovery, especially if infrastructure spending accelerates or if global supply chains start to normalise. Companies in these sectors are often viewed as cyclical, meaning they tend to thrive during periods of economic growth as demand for raw materials, energy and industrial production increases. Tom believes that these sectors could be poised for a rebound, particularly if there is an uptick in government spending on infrastructure projects or if the global economy enters a new phase of growth. The case for market diversification and the next leg of growth. 
Ultimately, Tom Lee's outlook for the end of the year centers on a more diversified market rally, one that broadens out from the narrow focus on technology stocks. While the technology sector, especially the big names driving the MAG7 stocks, has been the dominant force in the market for much of this year, Lee believes the post-election period could usher in a more balanced market expansion. Investors, particularly those who have been heavily allocated to tech, may start looking for areas where valuations are lower and growth potential is higher. He sees potential for this shift in a number of places. Small cap stocks, with their relatively low valuations and room for growth, could be a big winner in the coming months, especially if there's a continued recovery in economic conditions. Likewise, sectors like financials and basic materials, while not as glamorous as tech, could see strong performance if the broader economy picks up steam. Companies in these sectors are generally more tied to the business cycle, so a recovery in industrial activity, consumer spending, and infrastructure investment could have a positive impact on their earnings. What this means for investors going forward. For investors looking ahead, Tom Lee's message is clear the market is more than just tech. While technology has been the dominant theme for much of the year, there are plenty of other opportunities in sectors like small cap stocks, financials, and basic materials that could provide significant upside potential as the market broadens out. He believes that the end of the election cycle, combined with a renewed sense of optimism in the economy, could lead to a period of more diverse and sustainable growth. For those who have been focused primarily on tech, this shift could present an opportunity to rebalance portfolios, reduce concentration in overvalued sectors, and capitalize on growth in areas that have been underappreciated. The key takeaway is that market breadth is likely to expand, and as that happens, investors may find that looking beyond the familiar tech giants will help unlock additional returns. In Tom Lee's view, the next leg of the market's rally could very well come from areas of the market that are currently undervalued and poised for a rebound, providing exciting opportunities for those willing to diversify and adjust their positioning.